Hi Virgo, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dean, and I'm going to be doing your mid to end of May 2022 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps with the algorithm, and it really helps this channel out. So thank you so much for doing so. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. This cleanse and meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Now I want to apologize if I sound a bit congested. My allergies are really acting up. So let's see what energies we need to be mindful of, Virgo. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. This is the Four of Swords. We need to be mindful of the fact that we are not going to give ourselves a break or somebody else isn't going to give us a break. It's always going to be one thing and then another and then another. There's no time to calm down or rest or connect with ourselves. That's what we need. So we need to quiet things down and yet that's going to be the exact opposite of the energy that's around us during this time so just be very mindful of that also be mindful because we can go spirit is just showing me us going to the other extreme where it's kind of like we're so lethargic that we don't want to get out of bed so just being very aware of this energy that's around us right now where either it's we're on the go all the time or we're just like beat drop dead exhausted so just just be aware of this our chakra energy angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly okay so we have two right here the heart chakra and the throat chakra the heart chakra is love and so spirit is really saying to us embrace love let ourselves shine with love it's part of our life purpose it's part of what we're supposed to be speaking into our world we're supposed to be embracing the voice of love you know our life purpose during this time in our throat chakra is connected with our love, with what we, we love in our lives, with really letting that shine. And this is going to almost seem counterintuitive to us during this time. We're going to kind of, again, want to be working all the time or, or focusing all the time and yet just truly being and and speaking what makes us happy and, and doing what makes us happy. It almost feels like we're not on the right path. So just being aware of this is going to be very important. So let's see what energy is going on let's see what the tarot has to say angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides we're starting off with a celtic cross angels and spirit guides okay this one right here So we're going to turn everything over at once. Oh, goodness. Okay, Virgo. 
So where we are right now is the Eight of Pentacles. And that makes perfect sense, especially since we're not letting ourselves have a break. We are so focused on working. We're so focused on getting everything just right and getting it done just so that we're throwing ourselves into our work, into our craft, into whatever it is that's of the utmost importance to us. So it can be our children. It can be, you know, our jobs. It can be our hobbies. It can be our pets. It could be our gardens. It could be, you know, our, our dreams and our aspirations whatever it is, we are putting ourselves into it 150%. We're actually draining our battery and we're not recharging ourselves because we're not taking care of ourselves. So being aware of this is astoundingly important. It then brings us to our challenge and our challenge is the Knight of Cups, letting our heart lead us, knowing that yes, we have our armor on so that the world doesn't attack us and hurt us as profoundly as it can, all right? But it's letting love guide us. It's letting our hearts be just an integral part of ourselves. There's somebody around us who does this. There's somebody around us who really leads with their heart, who, you know, embraces their soul, who you kind of like sings their own song. They annoy us right now because they're so going against what we're what we stand for. So just kind of stepping back and being like, okay, why is this so annoying to me? Or why is this so overwhelming to me? Because spirit is really saying, let me move forward in this beauty and in this joy. So just really connecting with that energy. Cause I even see it like a little kid is like singing or something like that. And we're like, oh, just be quiet. Spirit's saying, why are you saying this? Like, let yourself sing. And it can be that we had an incident when we were little where we were singing, we were really joyous. And our parents said to us, oh my gosh, you know, you're giving me such a headache. You can't sing anyway. Just shut up. You know, that type of thing. And it stuck with us. You know, those words that hurt and the people don't even remember saying them. So I just have that energy coming forward. And it's like, it made us kind of step away from what we really wanted. And that person, again, does not know what they had done. Like they, they were just angry in that moment. They were overworked. They were tired. They were overwhelmed. It brings us to what we're focusing on. We're focusing on our heartbreaks and our pains and our disappointments. There is a sense of if I can achieve enough, succeed enough, prove enough, then my heartbreak doesn't hurt anymore. And it's like, no, if I look at my heartbreak and my pain and I acknowledge it and I name it and I say, I see you and I take away its power, because I already own it and claim it and know it. That's when our heartbreak doesn't hurt us as much. That's when its power is diminished. But we're going to have what we're focusing on is our pain. And what we're focusing on is going back to an inadequacy. And whatever we go through at this time, it makes us feel upset or is painful for us or hurtful for us. It makes us feel inadequate. So just acknowledging this with the three of swords in our present moment, and knowing that, yes, there's a bit more vulnerability here and a bit more things make us feel like, oh my gosh, I just can't because this is very much at the surface of us. Our heartbreaks, our pains are at the surface right now. And if we start to look at them and say, you know what, I'm not defined by this or this isn't a bad thing or just because I'm not like, quote unquote, everybody else and I'm, I'm different, it doesn't mean that I'm not valued and I'm not worthy. It brings us then to our past and our past is the empress. Our past is this energy of creation. There's also, I just see in our past, a very strong woman, a very, very strong, beautiful, but she doesn't have to be traditionally beautiful. Like everybody doesn't have to be like, oh my gosh, you know, like your mom was so pretty type of thing. It can be that she was just beautiful to us, our mother, our grandmother. I see this as presenting very strongly as feminine. This person was very feminine of nature. So even if they weren't a woman, they they were very, they had a very, very feminine nature to them, a very nurturing, very growing nature. There was something creative about them. All right. And it's like, we've inherited that spark. We've inherited that creativity. They want us to utilize it. I don't know if this person has passed or, you know, they might just think you're not listening to them. Like you're in your own world, you're doing your, your own thing and you're not listening to, to their suggestions or what they're saying. And they want you to kind of slow down. They also want you to embrace the beauty because they know how fast everything goes. They really do. They know how fast everything changes and moves and and how like you wind up missing things without even realize you're missing it. So so just be aware of that because that's going to be important. That's one of the things that they wish that they kind of did differently, that they were a little bit more present, even if they were super, super present. They're like, I could have been more present. You know, it, it could have been it could have been richer. Yeah. 
and they mean richer of, of emotions. That's what they want you to know. They want you to know that the heart is so important and people and our connections are so important. It moves us to our strength. And our strength during this time, the Page of Swords, can come from a child who asks questions or a person who's very innocent, very young. They, they ask questions. They kind of push boundaries that way because they don't know any better. They don't know that they're pushing the boundaries. But there's also a sense of it comes from us embracing asking questions, embracing looking at things in a different light, embracing kind of diving deeper into ourselves and what we want and where we're going and what's important to us and, and appropriate for us and where we want to be. It's like all of a sudden these questions are coming to the forefront of our mind here, Virgo. And it's like, oh, I didn't think to ask that or I didn't think I could have that or I didn't think that was important. And yet it is. And it brings us to our near future, which is the world opening up. All of a sudden it's like, oh, can I do this? Like, oh, I get to walk through that door. <laughs> like, this is for me. There's a sense that we doubt it. It's a sense of like, this has been denied to us for so long. It's kind of like telling yourself you can't eat the candy bar, right? So all you want to do is eat the candy bar or the pretzels or, or something like that. Or saying, oh, I'm not going to eat a lot of food. So all of a sudden you're really, really hungry. And then you go to eat it and you're thinking, oh, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. So we're saying like, there's kind of like that guilt, um, bad association that we've made in our own minds over something. Whereas we, if we just let ourselves step forward and we let ourselves, you know, have this bit of freedom, it would be easier for us. So it's kind of like saying it's okay to move forward. It's okay. Stop, stop stressing yourself out. And I know the, the candy and the food thing might be very triggering for certain people, but that's the energy that's here. I'm just seeing like, you know, oh, I can't eat the pretzels. So I'm going to sneak them in the, in the closet with the lights off type of thing. And, and that's the energy that's coming forward. So just, just acknowledging, no, 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 no. I get to step out in the light. And there's nothing wrong with eating a few pretzels. There's nothing wrong with, you know, being who I am. And that becomes very beautiful. It's kind of like we step into the world and say, this is me. And yes, we want something more. We want it to be beautiful. And we want us to be beautiful too. But it doesn't come through deprivation. It just doesn't. And so the world is opening to us in a way that says, let you... Let yourself be a part of it. Let your heart connect with it all. It then brings us to our suggested approach. And it's like, okay, listen, Virgo, you need to guard your chakras, okay? You need to make sure that your energy isn't being siphoned away by everybody else because you're being so open. You're being too open. You're being too inviting to people or you just don't have proper boundaries. So our approach is I need to ground myself. I need to center myself. I need to see what I want. I need to see what I need. And I need to say, okay, these are the steps that I'm taking because I'm standing in my own energy. I'm standing in myself. That's going to be really super important because there's something here where like we just don't have those boundaries and we think, oh, I'm being so nice or oh, I'm being so caring and oh, I'm being so compassionate. And yet on the next breath, it's like, why does everybody take advantage of me? So being aware of this is going to be very important. We also need to be aware that we can go to the other extreme, the other extreme of like all of a sudden then we're too guarded, we're too blocked off, we're not connecting with anything. So just just be aware of that. So what we need to know is that it's time to move forward. It's time to take our knowledge, to take our innovation, to take our ideas, move away from what we once thought we would love, move away from, I see it more as an ideal, like we thought something would be perfect. We we're chasing a fairy tale and spirits like, no, the fairy tale never is real. Like, you know, there's always real life. After Cinderella marries the prince, she then has to live as a princess, not just have the dress and not exist anymore. So this is us saying, okay, you know what? This dream, the way, the exact way that I had had it isn't working or it isn't coming together. I need to walk away from certain things. I need to look at things differently. I need to step into myself and what I want and where I'm headed for me. And our hopes and our fears are that the doors open, that we hold the world, that all of a sudden there is more of a connection and there is a greater way to move forward. And we hope for that. And yet it's terrifying at the exact same time. What if we embrace this world and it doesn't work out? There's a part of us that really wants to kind of close the door and hide away. It then moves us to our potential. And it's the four of wands. Our potential is a commitment of happiness and success and new opportunities and, and bounty and brilliance. And it's like, yeah, I can walk forward. Yeah, I can, I can do this. But we have to believe it because there's an energy around us that's like, if I just throw myself so much into everything, if I just, you know, kind of work so hard, then it has to be. And yet spirit is saying, if we work so hard, 
what's going to happen is that everything is just passing us by. And we're so focused on one goal that we miss all our other goals. And so there needs to be a celebration. There needs to be dan dancing and laughter and, and connection and, and smiles and, and calm moments in between. So let's go deeper into the tarot. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. Our past, we have our past, our present, our future. We have the Ten of Pentacles. And the past being the Ten of Pentacles. This is, this is an institution of some sort. I just see it as like, it's either being in a family that like everybody takes care of each other, a, a sense of like being in this community where everybody's taking care of each other. But yeah, it's a sense of connection. It's a sense of reaching higher goals. It's, it's really beautiful, Virgo. There is a sense of like, this is where I felt safe. And I almost see us as like trying to recreate it, trying to recreate the really beautiful aspects of it. But we're really looking towards it. And it, it can even be, okay, so it's interesting. So for some of us, we didn't have that ideal childhood, right? We didn't have that, that beautiful, like everything was working out or that, that sense of security and safety. And so we saw it on television or we read it in books and we've been trying to recreate that beautiful thing. All right. And it's either how we've imagined it or how we lived it. It moves us then to our present, which is the nine of pentacles, the page of pentacles and the three of, of swords. So the nine of pentacles is prosperity and success. We have the nine of pentacles. Where is, do we have the nine of pentacles here? No, the nine of pentacles is, is an ownership. It's like, this is me. This is what I want. You know, this is where I'm headed. I need to be present in the right here and right now. So subconsciously, we know we have to be more present in our hard work paying off in our joyous moments. And it brings us then to the page of pentacles where we're a student of what we love, of what we really value. Now we're represented by the pentacles in the, in the minor arcana. And so there is a real sense of, am I embracing what I love? Am I embracing me opening up the door, seeing what I desire, seeing what I love, seeing what I need and saying, this is me because we're, we need to embrace a childlike innocence and beauty that is definitely becoming a part of us. And so subconsciously there's, there's this question of, can I, can I look at things in a different way, in a different light and say, this is what I want for my life and for myself. And it brings us then to the three of, of swords and the three of swords is I'm embracing my voice. The three of swords is I'm looking at the heartbreaks and the pains and the disappointments and the angers and the upsets and the hurts. And I'm saying, I see you. I'm not defined by you anymore. I'm embracing my voice. I'm embracing what I want. I'm looking at what I need and I'm opening up the door to me. And it moves us because here we're standing on the outside of the door and it's like, I'm not allowed in. And now it's like, if I can be that student of what I truly love and what I truly need, I'm stepping into everything that is beautiful and perfect about me. We then move to the two of pentacles and the two of pentacles is, is finding balance. It's our future is about balancing ourselves and being able to juggle what we truly want and seeing the things we need to sacrifice, but also the effort that we need to put in that doesn't lead to obsession, the effort that we put in, but that still has our feet firmly planted on their ground and our energy still pulling from the earth, ourselves still centered. All right. Our subconscious tarot energy is the six of pentacles. The six of pentacles is be very mindful not to be pulled into the past. Be very mindful to live in the present because we're going to have a tendency during this time to think, oh my gosh, the past was better. Like, oh my gosh, this was, it was better when? And it's like, no, let me be in the here and the now. It moves us to our subconscious past energy, which we have the five of wands. 
the five of wands, we have two five of wands, right? One in this deck. One is of children fighting and the other is of, of grownups. This is the grownups. The children is play getting out of hand. Here, this is we've become so used in our past to fighting. We've become so used to having to stand our ground, having to do this, having to do that, that it's become an all-consuming, overwhelming part of us. And that's something that we're needing to release. We're needing to let go of because our fallback energy is, I need to fight for this. I need to fight for this. And Spirit's like, why are you wasting all your energy fighting? It moves us to our subconscious. Present energy, and it's the Emperor. Standing in our power, standing in our glory. Very also strong paternal energy coming forward. So it can be from somebody who has passed, but it can also be, I see this as somebody, somebody in our waking world. This is a very strong person. They don't have to be masculine, though the energy is presenting as masculine, but they could have very quote unquote masculine traits. So there is a real sense here of I'm stepping into what I want, what I need, where I need to be. And there's a strength about me. And they're saying, be strong and be confident. Stand up, shoulders back, head held high. It's like, I taught you to be proud of yourself. Be proud of yourself. That's their energy that they're really projecting forward. Okay. It brings us then to our subconscious past energy, no, future energy, which is the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is, I just see this as enlightenment, is a sense of, this is what I needed. Like, this is the joy that was missing from my life. This is what I needed. This is the key. I'm opening the door. I'm stepping through and I'm embracing what I need from my life right now. It brings us to, and this is also Taurus energy coming forward, but it's like, it's like I've awakened, I've awoken, I've awakened, I've awakened. Yeah, I've awakened. I've awakened to myself. There's a sense of enlightenment coming. It moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of, and it's a nine of cups. You know, it's so interesting because I see this as not sharing the wealth. It's like sitting at the table and saying, I have all this and yet not sharing it with everyone, not sharing it with anyone. It's like, I have all this. I can give all this, but I choose to keep it all for myself. And it moves us then to our subconscious chakra energy, which is truth, balancing our world with truth, with harmony, with insight, with ideas, with looking at ourselves and saying, this is what I want. This is the knowledge that I am embracing. This is where I'm moving forward, speaking our truth. People might not like to hear it, but they, they will honor it as we will honor ourselves. All right. All right, Virgo. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Virgo, and may blessings always be with you.